Hello, and thank you for joining us today for this Onc Live Peer Exchange Panel discussion. Advanced ovarian cancer, recent advances, and unmet needs. Despite recent progress in developing novel therapies for advanced malignancies, of the ovaries, fallopian tubes, and peritoneum, this heterogeneous group of diseases remains fatal in most cases, and our continued understanding of the underlying biology of these clinically challenging disease states will facilitate development of personalized approaches to systemic therapy. In addition, we're challenged to delay recurrence and improve clinical outcomes, including patient-reported outcomes and quality of life in the clinic, and hopefully with your help around the world. So in this OncLive Peer Exchange panel discussion, my colleagues and I will discuss the latest research surrounding systemic therapy and surgery for this group of diseases that we call ovarian cancer and the implications for treating our patients. My name is Brad Monk. I'm a gynecologic oncologist and professor at the University of Arizona and Creighton Universities, both in Phoenix, Arizona. I am joined by four of my esteemed colleagues, Dr. Robert Coleman, Vice Chairman and Director of Research at MD Anderson Cancer Center. Welcome, Rob. Dr. Matthew Powell, Associate Professor and the Director of Gynecologic Oncology. Welcome, Matt. Dr. Katie Moore runs the Cancer Research Clinical Trials Unit Phase one program, fellowship at the University of Oklahoma. We're honored to have you, thank you. And Dr. Gottfried Konechny, associate professor within the Department of Medicine from the University of California, Los Angeles. Thank you, Gottfried. So I'd like to begin by talking about molecular testing in ovarian cancer. Uh, we live in a personalized medicine world. We're very fortunate that we are expanding our understanding of uh, ovarian cancer. Uh, I'd like to begin by talking about BRCA, um, Godfrey, tell us what, what BRCA1 and 2 genes are. Well, BRCA1 and 2 genes are uh, critically important for maintaining DNA integrity, and they're important for double-strand DNA repair. And uh, unfortunately, the BRCA1 and 2 genes are commonly mutated in ovarian cancer, and they lead to dysfunctional double-strand DNA break repair which is associated with the familial risk for breast and ovarian cancer, but importantly uh, now also predicts sensitivity to the new class of drugs, the PARP inhibitors. So what's that relationship, Rob? What's the relationship to, between BRCA, double-stranded DNA repair, and PARP? Yeah, so you know, PARP, we've now come to realize, has, is a, uh, a, uh, a protein that has a lot of functions, and one of those is to repair single-strand DNA breaks. And so to kind of tie in what Gottfried mentioned is that if we're able to inhibit that process of base excision repair, essentially, then there's a reliance on more high fidelity and more energy intensive processes like uh, homologous, recombination, um, deficient, uh, homologous recombination pathways, which BRCA governs. So poly ADP ribose polymerase, right. PARP, repairs single-stranded DNA, and when you give a PARP inhibitor, the inherited BRCA can't repair the resulting double-stranded break. Correct. Correct. So Matt, who should be tested for germline BRCA mutations, and how do you operationalize that in St. Louis? Great question, Brad. And, and as you mentioned, when we talk about ovarian cancer, we also mean primary peritoneal cancer, fallopian tube cancer, important for all of us to realize that we really offer testing to all of our patients that have those diagnoses. We offer it early. We have them see a genetic counselor. Um, and the uh, testing process usually involves a lot of education, but we really think that getting that information helps us triage that patient, not only for clinical trials, but also cascade testing their families. So it can have a very big impact on that not only the patient, but the family as well. So it's autosomal dominant, you test everyone. It's, it's uh, inherited, what I call genetic. But then there's a genomic developing molecular signature. Still could be BRCA, but they right. developed it. They didn't get it from their, from their parents. Um, when should we test the tumor? Should we test both the germline and the tumor? Because if you're germline negative, you might have a somatic mutation. Well, I mean, recent data suggests that approximately 10 to 15 percent of unselected patients with ovarian cancer have a germline mutation, but then there's another 5 to 10 percent that have a somatic mm -hmm. mutation, right. meaning that developed it in the disease process. And recent data show that they also respond well to PARP inhibitors. So the question is, do you extend your germline testing to somatic tumor testing? And I think um, that's an ongoing debate. So I used to think, why don't I just test the tumor? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. 
you know, germline mutations are present in the tumor, but I think you have told me that I need to do a panel germline. I mean, I get it, we test for BRCA. What's the role of panel testing? What are the other germline genes? So, right, so there's, there are panel uh, tests available, and they include a variety of, of genes, but the ones we think are important right now, and this may change, are of course BRCA1 and 2, but also um, BRIP1, RAD51C, RAD51D, and then PALB2 may become important for ovary. It's certainly important in breast. So right. I think that's on the list. And so if you, and those are like 1% to 2% frequency genes. So they're not, you don't find them often, but we increasingly believe that they have this, the, they're high penetrance, they have the, um, they import the same risk of developing cancers as BRC1 or 2, and we're treating them and doing cascade testing for them just as we do BRC. So you treat mm. them uh, very similarly and that you counsel their families, importantly, And the very NCCN similarly. guidelines give some guidance, right, in how to handle the family member that might be positive regarding mammography and right. you know, colonoscopy, right? But would, right. would you then just skip testing for BRCA1 and 2? Would you go straight to gene panel testing to cover sort of a bigger group of exactly. patients that may potentially benefit, or would you wait and see first? We're sending panel testing yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. what our institution does. Yeah, that's our process as the well. Same. Yeah, and, and you know, this, this is an evolving field, right? You agree. So right? Uh, you know, we started very focused, and now we're expanding. And as we learn more, we'll, more of these will come. So I, I hope that lots of people listen to this. So I think we're all doing panel testing, mm -hmm. but the ASCO, NCCN, right, and the Society of Gynecological Oncology, they only say test everyone for bracket. Do those guys need to reassess the guidelines and really say that we should test? all ovarian cancers for the panel that you suggested? I mean, wouldn't it be helpful if we could have some consensus guidelines? Well, I think I if you... <laughs> they're coming. <laughs> yeah. they're, in, they're, they're in the works. Yeah. Are they? The works. Yes. yes. They're yes. coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think if you look at the association with familial risk, I think there's good data out there to show that they are linked to an increased risk of breast or ovarian cancer, but regarding response to PARP inhibitors, um, we don't have very That's solid data yet, so I think... Right. Um, but for familiar risk, I think, yes, it should be standard of care. But even, even Lynch testing. syndrome genes increase your chance of having ovarian Correct. cancer, right? So, right? so again, that's more the role of panel testing. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah. Go and ahead. I, just a one, one comment, because you know, the, the, um, Katie mentioned highly penetrant genes. And so there, there are now emerging a number of low penetrant genes, which also seem to carry familial risk. And right. those are starting to be looked at carefully. So, so uh, like I said, it's an evolving dynamic field. Very exciting.